Hi, Jeff Spira here again, and today I'm going to talk to you about adhesives. So let me go in um, for a moment here and tell you why my boat designs are different than other wooden boats. Um, my boats are not a collection of small parts all sailing along in the same direction, loosely held together with fasteners, which is actually how all other wooden boats are designed and built. Um, minor unibody structures. Um, if you saw my fasteners video, you realize the fasteners don't do very much uh, except hold the boat together while the adhesive cures. So um, you could actually remove the fasteners and if as long as you filled the holes with something that uh, where they were left, um, it, wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't change the, the strength performance of the boat at all. So um, it's the adhesive that holds them together. So glue is critical here, okay? You know, my basic design philosophy was performed under the anticipation that all bonding would be performed with an adhesive grade epoxy. Now, the adhesive grade of epoxy is a thicker version than the laminating grade that people use to uh, fill out uh, fiberglass cloth. So, um, I'm sure you've bought adhesive grade of epoxy in the hardware store. It comes in those two little tubes, you know, uh, they make the regular version that. Uh, in a five minute version and you, you mix out a little bit on the back of the package and, and mix them together with a toothpick and, and fully and uh, um, you know the regular version uh, you know works for maybe half an hour you can use it and then uh, and then it starts to get tacky in four or five hours and then it cures in, in 24 hours or something like that. The five minute version uh, is workable for about five minutes and then it stays tacky up till about 15 or 20 minutes and then in about an hour maybe one, one to two hours it cures. Now the curing of epoxy is a chemical reaction. It's an exothermic chemical reaction so it generates heat um, and so it's, it's also very temperature dependent you know, those time, most of the time it says it, uh, use it about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, I think, 21 Celsius. Um, so if it's too cold, say colder than 55 degrees or so, which is 13 C, um, the epoxy won't really cure right. Uh, it takes way too long. And if it's really hot, say over 85 degrees, which is 30 C, it all happens so fast, so you need to make very, very small batches and uh, um, use it up before, you know, half hours up or something like that to, for it to work appropriately. So, Well, you might be wondering, why epoxy? Well, epoxy is a very different uh, adhesive than any other wood glue. Um, if you were to take the wood glue, the white glue that comes in a tube or brown color or whichever, or even resorcinol glue, which is kind of a purple color, um, that they use and you know they use for uh, wooden airplanes and different things like that. Um, you you have to have a very very close fitting joint. The joint needs to fit together very closely from side to side everywhere. Um, the two pieces of wood need to touch uh, in an even sort of manner, and then you need to clamp them very tightly together um, for the joint to to be strong enough and work. So um, epoxy though can't be used that way. Um, it actually requires a little bit of a gap between the wood. Now it doesn't have to have a gap everywhere, but, but it, it, takes, uh, it takes some like say scratches in the wood or, or at least some way to keep a little bit of space in there so the epoxy doesn't get pushed out and starve the joint. So um, I, I used to work with a company that made the, uh, um, the, the uh, bearings that go on CNC machines. You, you may have heard them, though. they're on the ways. You may have heard them referred to as uh, turkite bearings. Actually a lot of people say tersite, but it's really turkite because it's a turquoise color and that's where the, the term came from. So um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a strengthened version of, of PTFE, you know, Teflon. It's a strengthened version of it. So what, what we did is, uh, and I worked on a machine that makes it really, that it, uh, it gets extruded into big logs and then the logs get uh, skived into sheets, just like they skive, uh, you know, plywood uh, laminations. So, um, 
and then they they uh, etch one side so that this that side will 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 be uh, accept epoxy that epoxy can stick to it so and then they glue it on the bottom of the steel holder the the steel um, ways and then uh, and so that it's uh, it makes a good bearing there so um, but the problem was that if we if we didn't treat the epoxy that you glued it down with um, you would starve the joints and, and because they were too good too good of a fit and then the, the ways the bearings would fall off so um, we actually came up with microspheres that we mixed in with the uh, with the epoxy they were little five thousandths diameter little glass uh, balls um, and uh, which is what one one tenth of a millimeter something like that that um, that you mix with the epoxy so that you couldn't you couldn't crush the joint all you could do was get it down to one ball thickness and uh, which is the right amount of space to have a good joint so uh, once we did that the uh, the ways stuck on pretty well <laughs> same th the same thing is true with boats you know um, my boats would be tough to do with wood glue I mean you could if you were an exceptional craftsman to really fit the joints perfect but um, but in general, there's going to be some roughness there, and you may be sanding sanded joints and things like that. So there'll be places for the epoxy to go in the joint. So um, so that's why if you put epoxy in my boats, even if there's a little bit of a, a gap in some of the joints, it could be as much as a sixteenth of an inch, which is, what is that, a one and a half millimeter, something like that. Um, <clears throat> then there's still room for the epoxy to fill in and make a good sturdy joint or, or up to touching but you need a little bit of uh, uh, you know the, the, the grain of the wood of, you know will, will, will allow a little bit of epoxy to soak in so it, it, uh, it, it will make sure the joint stays, stays tough so um, and that's why, uh, you know, I can trust the bonded joints. So that's also why I, I specify, you know, construction grade lumber, you know, and um, ACX plywood instead of, uh, instead of marine ply and, and uh, inexpensive fasteners. I, I, it doesn't really matter to me if the, if the stainless gets uh, some, some starvation and, uh, from air and, and does a little bit of corroding or anything like that. It just, it doesn't bother me at all. But you, that would be a big deal in a in a all wood boat. That's why they usually go with things like uh, bronze fasteners and stuff. But stainless is fine in, in my boat. So, um, anyway, it's because I trust the bonded joints. Okay. Now I said earlier that you need uh, an adhesive grade of epoxy. Uh, well, yeah, and if you do it, that'll work just fine. So. Um, if you're building one of my boats, though, you can get a general purpose grade and use it for both the uh, bonding and for the uh, the filling of the laminate uh, lamination uh, of, of fiberglass cloth on the outside. If you get the right grade of, of epoxy, so um, I don't know much about West or Raka epoxies. I, I know they have different uh, compounds for different uh, uses, so. One of my favorite uh, suppliers, though, is Aeromarine Products. I, I know the, the uh, owner and developer of the company. And he also sells on Amazon and eBay as well. So um, anyway, their bonding grade of epoxy is called a 400 series, and it's, it's, it's right for gluing the wood together on the boat. So, um, But you can also buy the 300 series, which is kind of a general purpose epoxy and use it for both uh, glue and for, um, for laminating the outside. So, but if, when you use it for glue, uh, if you use the thinner laminating grade, you're gonna wanna thicken it a little bit, thicken the epoxy to make the joint. You can use wood flour or, or talc or uh, silica um, or microspheres. They, they make, you, you can buy microspheres now for uh, epoxy and, and mix it in with there to make the consistency about like that of, let's say, peanut butter. And, uh, and then it'll be, a, it'll be a better gluing grade of epoxy. But if you buy the, the regular 400 series epoxy that's a gluing grade, you don't need to thicken it. You just use it as is. So. Um, 
Anyway, I have links down below for their epoxies off of Amazon if you want to take a look, or you, you can look at them online, uh, or uh, if you want to buy them, that you just just click on them and you'll you'll go right to them. And you know they ship you know like like anything else from Amazon and everything. So uh, so w when I started d designing these boats, uh, you know I only thought of epoxy for the glues, so uh, and for the adhesives. So um, in the 1990s, though. It's about the time I, I started uh, selling these plans online. Uh, polyurethane adhesive, you know, kind of sprung on the scene. They came out, and um, there was a lot of chat in boat building circles about using it for boats. So um, now I got a hold of, or I started looking at, uh, at Gorilla Glue was the, the king of the, the of the polyurethanes back then, and uh, they were. Uh, they were the first out, and, and they did a lot of advertising and everything else. So, um, but they they claimed that their their uh, gorilla glue was not good for water immersion for wood in water. So um, I don't know why that is, um, but I think it has to do it because it doesn't it doesn't dissolve in water like like uh, you know some old fashioned glues do. Um, it it uh, but it it is very foamy, and I think what happens is it traps moisture. So. I think that's that's it's the way too foamy for for use on boats. So. Um, but about that time, about the year 2000, I, I decided I was going to try and build a, a boat using um, you know polyurethane glues uh, as a as a to bond the frames together. So um, so I did a little looking around and uh, I found this Elmer's Ultimate glue. Um, it didn't seem to have the same issues as. Uh, as Gorilla Glue, so I built a small boat using it, and you know I was really impressed with the sturdiness and how easy it was to apply, and and the, a lot of nice things about it. And it was inexpensive, everything. So um, you know I, I kind of you know mentioned that you could use polyurethane along with that, and uh, and a few people tried, and you know and I, I gave them you know that this Elmer's uh, sort of uh, um, reference, and they and they tried it, and it worked fine. So. Um, and a president and developer of another polyurethane glue um, got a hold of me and, and we talked, chatted via email for some time about the needs of my builders and what I was looking for in a glue and everything else like that. And he, he said his, his product, it's called Sticky Ass Glue, uh, would work better than, than many of the commercial glues that you could buy you know, in Home Depot or wherever else. So. Uh, I tried this product on some boat joints and, and uh, did a boil test and, and uh, was really impressed with the product. I mean, it's, it's a really good product and it'll work fine for your boat as well. Um, then later, you know, uh, we did some online discussions and a, a couple of the regular builders like Mark Vickers, you know, has built four or five of my boats. Um, his great construction videos are... Um, of him building an Albion Pacific uh, power dory. They're featured in my insider section. Uh, anyway, he used this Loctite PL Premium 3X construction adhesive, which is another, uh, you know, um, high strength polyurethane adhesive. So Now the trick with polyurethane is that they like the epoxy and unlike um, wood glues, they can fill gaps in, in the, you know, if there's a, it's a joint that doesn't fit perfectly, so they'll, they'll fill it. They'll fit as, fill as large a gap as epoxy will. Um, and in some cases, they can be nearly as strong as epoxy, uh, particularly if there's a messy gap that uh, from some, you know, moderate woodworking skills, let's put it that way. Um, they will foam up a little bit to uh, to actually fill a bigger gap than than the epoxy will. So um, they're also fairly flexible once they're cured, so that they won't crack or or get damaged if there's a lot of vibration or shaking, any of that kind of stuff. So now, just to show you how strong they are, uh, Mark Vickers Albion was I think it was maybe two years old, and he'd been using it for a while, um, and he has a, a fishing house or well, he's got a vacation home on the beach uh, in Mexico Beach, Florida. It's on the Florida Panhandle. Um, and when it, when it was about two years old that he'd been using the boat, um, the Hurricane Michael hit. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was uh, 
it was a pretty it was a pretty nasty hurricane that hit Mexico Beach and uh, and and there was a lot of destruction from it. You can go look it up if you want. So, and one of the trees on Mark's property um, uh, was uprooted by the by the hurricane. And uh, Mark wasn't there, by the way. He was at his 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 home up in uh, northern Alabama somewhere. Um, anyway, the uh, the trees was uprooted and it fell across his garage and boat. So it just flopped down and it just it completely took out the garage. It just crashed right through the structure and uh, and landed on the boat but uh, when he got there uh, he sawed up the the tree to get it off the boat and uh, uh, you know use it for firewood I guess <laughs> and uh, nothing wrong with the Albion so it was it was uh, just sitting there smiling it had no no damage whatsoever so uh, even with that big heavy tree falling on it so it was uh, um, it stopped a pretty stout tree from falling, you know. So uh, I'm glad I'm glad it, but the boat hung in there. So <laughs> and he, he's still using it today. So so now uh, when you apply uh, glues, and this is epoxy or polyurethane, you need to put quite a bit on the joint. Uh, you should completely cover the joint from edge to edge. So uh, don't don't just drool a little in the middle and then hope it spreads out. Um, you want to make sure that it's fully covered and then. Uh, uh, and then when you when you put the fasteners in, which are really the method of clamping, you don't have to wrench them down really tight or use really close spacing or anything like that. Just make sure that the glue kind of spills out of the joint a little bit, you know, and leaves a little fillet there. So, um, and uh, uh, it'll it'll be it'll be amply strong. So. Um, you know, it'll 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 take care of it. Take care of your needs there for sure. Even if you use uh, polyurethane, so um, so you can use polyurethane for all the wood to wood joints. That's all the framing. That's putting in the keelson. That's that's applying the plywood planking to the outside. That's uh, laminating up the uh, um, you know the the uh, butt blocks on the inside of the ply. So all of those things you can use. Uh, the polyurethane or a, a bonding grade or adhesive grade uh, epoxy or filled uh, regular grade epoxy. So any of those three are, are perfectly acceptable for those joints. Uh, you can't you can't use the polyurethane to fill the epoxy uh, cloth that you put on the outside. That still needs to be epoxy. So so um, um, anyway, that's the story of the adhesives and my boats. So. Uh, stop my, by, by my website and look at all the cool boats you can build uh, using these methods. And uh, be sure and like, share, and subscribe to this video uh, so you can keep up on all the uh, ongoing videos that I'm doing. So, Okay, well that's the story of adhesive and uh, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Talk to you again soon.